Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Justin. In today's video, I'm gonna be installing these consumption CT monitors on our in-phase 10 kilowatt solar system. First thing I wanna address is that I am not a licensed electrician. I'm very comfortable with working in electrical boxes. I've taken uh, three years of electrical. I have experience working in these boxes. If you're not comfortable and you're not willing to take on that risk, please hire a professional. Now with that said, let's get into the video. So no matter if we do turn all the electric off by turning the main breaker off, we still have live power up there, right? You see exposed wires right at the top. So I'm actually gonna be installing those CT consumption monitors on those two lines, but down here on the bottom. You can see that they run here and here. So that'll give me a lot safer position to work at. I've picked a cloudy day to work on this because I didn't want to interfere with the production of our solar panels. So there's our solar. That system is now off. Now we're gonna go outside and make sure to turn off some more breakers just for added security when we're working outside because there is live power coming from the roof. It should shut down simply because it has no power feeding from here to go up and turn those Micro inverters on, but we just want to be safe. Our disconnect, and we want to shut down all of those. Those are our production. This is our envoy. There's no uh, lights on. There is no power to this box. Now there's four screws in this that we have to take out. We're going to start our wires coming in, coming down. This is an elbow comes over, goes through into those boxes outside. And then once we come to the outside, it'll come through here. It'll go up through that, up through here, over and connect into the control panel. We'll roll this down. And for you guys that have subscribed to the channel or have been following along in this entire solar project, You've seen my video on how I got this installed. So uh, if you want more on that, I'll put a link right up here. You can check that out. But we are now ready to start fishing our wire through this pipe down and then out. If you don't have them, I'll put a link in the description below. You can get them off of uh, Amazon or you can get them off of Enphase uh, directly from them as well. And if you buy these off of Amazon and that link that I'm going to leave in the description below, it helps my channel, helps support me, doesn't cost you any extra, and I thank you. Let's put some tape on it because that could definitely, that's very sharp. I don't want to overdo it and make it get caught on anything, but I also do not want it damaging my wires. Okay, here we are. I'm gonna pull a little bit more out of this. So let it sit down there and be a good little boy. And while I'm doing it, I'm gonna run both of these at the same time. So we need to make sure that we're connecting this into the right um, ports on the other side. So what I wanna do is just grab a little bit of tape and we'll make this one because it has that black tape on it and there's only one string. That's L1. Because I don't have a lot of room in that conduit, I couldn't put a loop on my puller. So I'm just gonna kind of hope <laughs> that this works out for me and it will pull back through without getting snagged on anything. And now you can see why I turned the electricity off because I'm so close to that box there. Voila! We'll just kind of pull through what I think I'm going to need inside of that box up here. 
And one thing you see me do, and I feel kind of stupid, was I didn't mark the other end of this one here. But being that it hasn't been pulled yet, I can tell it's this one. So if I take this and pull it, it's pulling that one down, right? So just make sure to take both sides. But if you forget, you can just use that method right there that I used to, uh, to get it lined back out. Right there will give me plenty of wire on the inside for those two big wires coming out. So I'm just gonna leave this kind of hanging out right here. This will be the last thing that I'll actually hook up. Don't know if you guys can hear that, but I have got a storm rolling up on me. And I really need to get this wire in there. Now I see why I should have gotten me a coated wire puller. So this is what we got. Tucked it back in behind all the big wires so it can't move. Here's our wiring diagram. You see C1 and C2. The blue goes at the bottom. So I counted up one, two, three ports. The fourth one is for C1. Same thing with the bottom. The fourth one is for the blue on C1. And then the fifth one is for C2. So C1 ran up. It's hard to see with the wires in the way. Let's see if I can point this out. That's the first, second, third. There's the fourth screw right dead behind it. If you count up three screws, you'll see that that white wire is covering that fourth screw. But that's where CT1 goes. So that's your first one that we marked earlier with that black tape. It ran there. Then we put the C2 right beside of it. So you have the white up top, the blue on that bottom bus. All right. That's all it takes. So that is what my final combiner box actually looks like on my in-phase system. We have a production meter, our two consumption meters, our three branches, and our envoy. That's an envoy breaker there. The other one is for the panels. Before we can install them, we need to open them up. So just take your a little screwdriver, give it a little bit of pressure, and then take your thumb on the inside and open it up. So on our setup, the line side is going out and then it's coming in to the load side, all right? So this arrow needs to be pointing toward the load side. So that's coming in from the curb, coming up, going into the main uh, breaker. This is where that arrow needs to be pointing. So we're gonna clip that over top of those wires. Now remember, we did mark that this was going to be the L1. So this has to be on the same power side as our Envoy. So L1 here has matched what the L1 on the Envoy is. And here's the thing. If you hook that up wrong, it's actually not going to monitor the consumption correctly. All right, so we're going to have to figure this one out because I cannot clip it here because it's going to stick out and I won't be able to put my service cover back on. Extremely cautious around that top. I'm gonna put that up there. And one last thing I did before I go to put the cover on is I put me a little zip tie on that wire. I didn't run it through to hold it because that way that CT cannot slide down and get real close to that bus and cause any problems. So I wanna make sure that that was secure. And now that we have those consumption CTs installed out there, we want to do a little test. We'll turn the heater up a little bit and then we'll see if our consumption and our production, what type of difference we get in that. So I'll go ahead and turn this up. So with this heater being turned up, the consumption should spike. As the heater comes on, 
we're going to be watching the import and the producing together you'll see that the import is 13.6 now and I'm consuming because we're producing 2.3 we're consuming 15.8 kilowatts and if I turn the heater off you'll watch that number on the importing drop significantly now it's down to 1.5 the production is 2.3 and we're only consuming 0.9 and we're sending back to the grid currently as you can see on the left on the right we're actually powering the house everything looks like it's be work out correctly if you enjoyed this video be sure to smash that thumbs up button it really helps me out a lot I appreciate you guys sticking with me throughout the entire video hopefully you learned something today if you did leave me a comment below I love hearing from you guys and I'll catch you in the next project.